All right, we're gonna play some one three today. I'm here with minus EV Nate. What up? And yeah, it's gonna be a good one. Hey guys, sorry for this rushed intro. We had about 45 seconds to get into the card room before our names were taken off the list. So we had a little D-Gen truck going to get into Boston Billiards. Anyway, let's get right into the hands. The session started off pretty slow. There was one hand where action folded to the button, the small blind called, and I three bet five four of spades to 60, and they both folded. I made a hero call with king seven on a queen queen seven nine eight board with three hearts. I won a couple other pots, I quickly found myself up, I don't know, 220 bucks. And that leads to the first interesting hand of the night. I laugh because it reminds me of a... I open ace three of hearts under the gun to $15. The player to my direct left makes the call, as does a big blind. Three ways to a flop, which comes eight, four, deuce, two hearts. The big blind checks to me, and I don't want to get blown off my equity. I check, with intentions to call any bet. But the player to my left checks as well. The turn's a pretty solid card. It's a seven of hearts. Turn in the nut flush. Casual. Can't complain about that. Better yet, the big blind leads out for $20. I make the smooth call. My hand doesn't benefit from much protection. So, I like a flat. The in position player gets out of the way. And we're off to a river, which comes the nine of spades. The big blind then bets out $100. Probably would have been easier for him to just take out his phone and Venmo me. But this is cool too. He has about 280 behind. I only have one move. I rip it all in. He chuckles, snap folds, and said he had a good hand to bluff with, with a heart blocker. Unfortunately for him, his heart blocker is no good against my pocket nuts. We're going to take down a nice pot here. Stack's looking nice as well, up around 350 bucks. Shortly after that hand, I pick up pocket eights in middle position. There's an early position limp and an open to $15. I make the flat. I think I should be three betting most of the time and folding the rest, but here we are. The big blind calls and then the limper limp raises to $30. A very bizarre move. The original razor folds. I'm in the blender. I'm not going to lie. I decide to just make the call. And the big blind does as well. So I'm somehow in position three ways to a pretty good flop of seven, seven, three with two diamonds. The big blind checks and the limp three better makes it $30. I'm going nowhere. I make the call and the big blind gets out of the way. Off to a good looking turn. It's the five of hearts. Early position checks and now I think I have the best hand 99% of the time. I decide to bet out for $100. I want to give a bad price to overcards and any draws that the early position player might have. He tanks for a bit, asks if I'm on a flush draw. I tell him I am, and he makes the call. The river's the king of clubs. I don't really like this card. If my opponent limp re-raised with ace-king, I now lose to that. He checks, I quickly check back, and he shows pocket fives. Turning a full house against my overpair? Well played, sir. Nice hand. Just one of the most bizarre hands I've ever been a part of. And I'm not going to lie, the entire hand tilted the shit out of me. Whatever, on to the next one. About 10 minutes later, I look down at ace queen of hearts in middle position. Action folds to me, and I raise to $15. The cutoff and button make the call, and we're three ways to a flop, which comes eight, six, deuce, one heart. I check, the cutoff checks as well, and the button makes it $40. I should definitely just check fold this hand, but with a heart out there, I decide to peel one. The cutoff folds, and we're off to the turn, which is the three of clubs. I check, and the button bets $40 again. Now I should be check folding 100% of the time. I'm still on tilt from the last hand, so I make the call, hoping to see an ace or a queen. The poker gods laugh and say the best they can do is the jack of diamonds. I check, and now the button bets $25. I think about jamming, but he only has like 50 more dollars after this $25 bet, so he's not going to fold anything. So I level myself into a call, thinking if there's any chance in hell he's bluffing here, I can't fold for $25 into a pot of around 200 Sure enough, he has 8-9 and just extracted max value versus a calling station donkey. 
Now, all the profits I made at the beginning of the session have dissolved into thin air. After that ace-queen hand, I recognized I was pretty tilted, so I went and had dinner. A nice plus EV chicken sandwich. I also decided to move one seat to the right to get this awesome vlogging angle. Same table, different seat. Anyway, the button straddles on, the blinds fold, and I make it $20 with eight six of spades. Only the button calls and we're off to a flop, which comes queen, four, deuce, two spades. I flop a flush draw, also the queen is pretty good for my opening range. I decide to continue with the bet of $25. The button makes the call, and we're off to the turn, which is the five of hearts. Picking up a gutter, I decide to size up, bet around the size of the pot, to the tune of 110 US dollars. The button tanks for a while, and eventually makes the call. The river comes the eight of hearts, and this card absolutely froze me. I end up rivering second pair, so I think I have one of two options. Check, and hope to get to showdown or commit to the bluff and try to get nines, tens, and jacks to fold. I have about $350 left, the perfect size to get those hands off this pot. I decide to do neither and spaz bet $75. This may be the worst bet in the history of my poker career, and I'm not exaggerating. I'm fine with a check, I'm fine with an all-in bluff, both of those good, reasonable plays, right? What's not reasonable is going for this in-between merge value bluff that I have literally no idea what it accomplishes. The button starts tanking, and at this point, I know my hand's no good. After about three or four minutes, he makes a call. I sheepishly turn over my 8-6 like a fucking idiot, and he turns over pocket 10s, the exact hand I probably could have bluffed him off of. And now I'm stuck. So, learn from my mistakes. Don't do stuff like this. This was actually just my way of trying to give back to you guys and teach you what not to do. I reload after the last hand and pick up 10-8 offsuit in the small blind two hands later. Action folds to the button, he limps in, and I raise to $18 as some kind of like tilt bluff thing. I'm not exactly sure. The big blind calls and the button does as well. Three ways to a flop, which comes eight, six, three, two diamonds. I somehow flop top pair with this garbage hand. Tons of draws to get value from. I bet $30. The big blind gets out of the way, and then the button raises to 80. He limp called pre, so I'm putting him on some type of diamond draw or maybe a straight draw. He has about $220, $230 behind. I decide to three bet jam and charge the max for those aforementioned draws. He snap calls and we're off to a turn in river, which come the six of clubs and the deuce of diamonds. Not feeling great as any six beats me as well as the diamond draw. I feel even worse when the button flips over pocket jacks. So yeah, he uh, limp called preflop with pocket jacks. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, didn't really put him on that hand. I have no idea how I could. I guess I just got owned. I have no idea. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm just puzzled. Alright, we're going to go ahead and reload one more time. We're going to shake off the run bad and the play bad and play our A game. Action folds to me in the low jack. I open to $15 with ace 8 offsuit. Maybe a little loose, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Only the button calls and we're heads up to a flop which comes 883 eight, rainbow. So this is awesome. I just flop trips with top kicker. Starting to think poker's maybe not all bad. I start with a check, as I'm not gonna have a ton of eights opening in middle position. Unfortunately, the button checks back and we're off to the turn, which comes the nine of hearts, completing the full rainbow. I decide to check again. I wanna give him a chance to bluff at this pot. He now bets out $25. Out of position, this needs to be a check raise 100% of the time. I'm not playing well, I miss it, I just make the call. And the river's the queen of clubs. I try to make up for lost opportunity when I lead for $55. This is obviously weird and just generally pretty bad. But then something interesting happens. The button raises to $150. Now I go into the tank. I'm obviously never folding, 
but I need to decide between a call and a raise. I'd have about $300 after the $150 raise, so all in would be my only sizing. A river raise at 1-3 is always extremely strong. On this board, it's going to be trips and full houses only. There's really not that many combinations of trips holdings, considering that three eights are already accounted for. And the villain here is going to have a boat a decent percentage of the time. He can easily have queen eight, eight nine, pocket threes, even pocket queens. I mean, people are limp calling with pocket jacks preflop, so I guess anything's possible. Throw jack 10 in there, and it doesn't seem like I can get many worse hands to call. I decide to just call, and the button has ace eight as well. So yeah, we're going to lose a few bucks in a chop pot. I mean, we didn't lose the pot, so that's got to count for something. <laughs> so yeah, at this point, nothing's really going right for me. But that's okay, that's poker. If you don't like that, then you don't like poker. We got a chance to turn it around, though. We get dealt jack-10 of spades in early position. I open to $15. The button and the big blind both make the call. Three ways to a great flop, 10, 9, 6, with two hearts. The big blind checks, and I start with a bet of $20. Charging flush draws, straight draws, worse one pair holdings, all that good stuff. Both players make the call, and we're off to the turn, which comes the deuce of diamonds. Introducing another flush draw. The big blind leads out for $45, which is definitely a bit concerning. He's the same player that limp called with jacks on the button, so needless to say, I'm terrified of him. My hand's way too good to fold, and this is obviously a super wet board. I could raise to like 80 or 90 bucks, uh, protect my top pair, and get a better sense of where I'm at. But I've been running like dog shit, so I go for the low variance route and call, and the button comes along as well. The river's now a great card. It's the jack of clubs. Seems like my run bad is over, boys. Most of the draws bricked out, and we river top two pair, so that's pretty good. The big blind checks, and this actually concerns me a lot. I saw this player check the nuts twice in the same orbit, so I know he loves to slow play his big hands. I think about betting, but in the end, I decide to just check and try to get to showdown. I'd obviously call if the button bets, but he checks, I announce top two expecting to be good, and then the big blind shows king queen for the nuts. This guy seems to have a pretty unique strategy. Put money in while he's behind, and then stop putting money in while he's ahead. He might be onto something. I might have to implement this into my game. Whatever, dude. On to the next hand. If there's one thing that can save a poker player from tilt, it's a double board bomb pot. We're gonna play a big one, so my mood should increase tremendously by the end of this hand. We're dealt queen nine of clubs in early position. The top board comes ace, seven, four, two clubs with the ace of clubs. And the bottom board comes three, four, five, two spades. We have the second nut flush draw on the top and two overs on the bottom. Not too concerned with that board though. I'm in early position. I check. It checks around to the cutoff who makes it $30. And then the button makes it 70. Action folds to me and I make the call. And the original razor does as well. Off to two turns, the top is the 9 of hearts, and the bottom is the 8 of hearts. I check, the cutoff goes all in for about $60, and then the button makes it $150. There are no clubs to be found on the bottom board, so at this point I'm thinking the entire deck has to be comprised of clubs, right? Plus, I turned a pair, so any queen, 9, or club should give me the winner on the top. I call. Turns out the deck has zero clubs in it when the top board rolls off the two of diamonds and the bottom board rolls off the eight of spades. Literally can't make this shit up. I check, ready to fold to a jam, but then the button does the most annoying thing possible. He bets $75, and if there's any chance in hell my nine is good on the top board, I cannot fold for this price, with the pot being so big. I chuck in the call, and the button shows ace deuce, for the flop straight and river two pair. Same guy from the last hand, by the way. I've personally given him like six or seven hundred dollars at this point. Now I'm just extremely tilted. Tilted at the cards, tilted at my play, tilted at other people's plays, just everything. I'm just tilted as fuck. Still got a chip in a chair. Let's see if we can do something with it. Three hands later, I'm in the small blind, and I'm dealt pocket aces. 
for all you new poker players out there, this is considered a really good hand because it actually blocks your opponents from having good hands like ace king and ace queen. The button straddles on, so I'm first to act. I make it $20. Folds around to the hijack, who makes the call, and then everybody else folds. Off to a good looking flop of 974 rainbow. I bet $25, and the hijack quickly makes the call. The turn is a three of spades, introducing a flush draw and a few straight draws. 5-6 comes in, but can't be too worried about that. I bet $75, setting up a river jam. The hijack thinks for a bit and makes the call. The river is the magical ace of clubs. Now I only lose to one hand. A great situation. Wait, did you guys actually believe that? The river is actually the worst card in the deck. It's a six of spades. I now lose to just about every hand imaginable. I laugh in my head about how horrible of a card this is. If I check and he jams, I'm calling. So I decide to just jam for my last 170-ish dollars. He goes into the tank, so it seems like he doesn't like this card very much either. Eventually, he makes the call and shows pocket sevens for a flop set. My river jam almost got him to fold. I wasn't tilt jamming. I was just trying to pull off a 500 IQ bluff. Unfortunately, couldn't get it through this time, but you know what? I'm proud that I had such a good read and had the balls to stick all the money in. I hate poker sometimes. I'm not sure if you guys remember the God's Plan music video, but Drake gives a bunch of people money. The end of the session was pretty much that, where I'm Drake, and the other players are these nice families. While it's a really nice gesture, it's not something you want to do if you want to be a successful poker player. After that ace's hand, I decide to call it quits and watch Nate play for a little bit. Here he is, taking down a nice pot. Shout out, Nate. With that, here's the outro. Alright, so that obviously sucked balls. That ace's hand to end the session was pretty fitting. After running like fucking shit uh, and kind of playing like shit, only fitting that I lose with pocket aces. Flop the set. Well played, sir. Um, but yeah, tough loss. And hopefully we can turn it around next time. All right, see you guys later.